So what do we have here? Well, we have a graph, and uh, obviously there's something going on with this particular graph, and we want to determine the domain and range with nothing but this graph. So this graph would uh, obviously represent a function of some sort. So this is a typical type of problem when you are studying functions in algebra. So you'll give, you'll be given some sort of graph, and you'll be asked to define the domain and range. So pretty common problem, and we're going to go through this particular problem just to kind of review some concepts that maybe you might be, you know, still having some questions on. Now, uh, before we get into this problem, it's important that you already have a good understanding of other things about functions, i.e. what they are, and domain and range. So if you're not quite sure about what uh, domain and range mean, well, I'll quickly review this in this particular video, but you definitely are going to want to do some follow-up. All right, so uh, I'm going to get to exactly how to determine the domain and range just by giving the graph in just one second. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, now let's talk about our problem here. If you think you can, you know, uh, figure it out, I would certainly pause the video and just say, all right, you know, what is the domain? What's the range? And uh, play around with this for a second. But I'm going to go ahead and get into exactly how we uh, solve this problem. Okay. Now, let's talk about the domain. All right, so here's our graph. And we need to understand uh, what these words mean. So D here, this is domain, and this is the range. And there's uh, a couple of different ways we can describe or write our answer. I don't really care the way, you know, which way you, uh, you use, okay, as long as it's uh, correct. But the domain is basically the input, the allowable input values, uh, input values, I'm just going to write this here, that you can, the set of input values you can plug into a function, all right? And what you want to be thinking about, it's associated with the x variable. It's called the independent variable. And the range is the set of output values. Let's put this right here, output values. Now, this variable here, or the range, is associated with the y uh, variable. Okay, And it's dependent upon the input variable. So in a function, you plug in input values, and then you generate a set of output values. Let me go ahead and fix this real quick. And so what we're going to do here is uh, look to describe or write the set or define the set of input values and the set of output values. But the clue here is we want to um, be thinking in terms of x, the x-axis, numbers along the x-axis for this function for our domain, our input value. So let's take a look at this. All right, so if you see, we have this uh, graph. It represents a function. And it's kind of going off like this forever. But something interesting is happening right here. Okay, Now, this graph appears to be approaching this line. Now, hopefully, you've seen this before, but this is what we call an asymptote. Okay, So it's a particular line that's basically a boundary. And this function's graph is going to be approaching this line, this vertical line, x equals 2. Okay, It's never going to touch it but it's going to get infinitely close to it down over here. So if you are not familiar with asymptotes, you're definitely going to uh, see them as you study more advanced mathematics like Algebra 2 and beyond. Okay, So it's definitely uh, one of these things that are not like a little side thing. You'll see this not only with uh, domains and range, but um, you know graphs of conic sections, uh, hyperbolas, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But anyways, hopefully you have a pretty good idea what an asymptote is already. So this uh, function here is kind of like approaching uh, this vertical line, x equals 2. Okay, so that's something we're going to have to consider. But then in this direction, it just seems like it's going to go off into infinity. All right, so that's basically the general behavior here. Now, when you're talking about the domain, really we're going to uh, kind of think about what x values are on this function's graph. So I'd like to look at this x-axis and be like, okay, it's this uh, function is uh, basically above or um, uh, under this part of the x-axis. In other words, this point here, 
that's an X, uh, this X point is on the line here, this X point's on, on this graph here, not the line, this uh, function. This X point is on this line here, and then over here, this X values right there, etc. Okay, so you can kind of get a sense of that. So X values, when I'm looking at the function here, okay, are gonna be all these X values, all right, off into infinity, all right? So we need to go ahead and define this, but remember this function, all right, this graph here is never going to touch the line X equals two, okay? All right, so what is a way we can describe this? Well, we can say a couple different ways. We wanna talk about all these values this way along the X axis, so we can say all X is greater than, but not equal to two, okay? So that's one way we can write that. Of course, you can say X is an element of the real number set. Well, we don't have to write that in there, you know, but if you wanted to be a little technically correct, that's perfectly fine. We are deal with, dealing with the real numbers. So it's as simple as this. The domain is just all the um, values X is greater than two. Now there is another way to express this using something called interval notation. So we can go this way, uh, open bracket, all right? This is something too that you're going to wanna know. Open bracket at two, and then this goes to positive infinity open bracket, okay? So if you haven't seen this before, this is called interval notation, and it also is another way to describe sets. But either one of these would be correct, okay? All right, so if you got that right, then I must give you a nice little happy face with an A+, plus, and we'll hold off on any uh, extra stars and 100% here, just because we haven't talked yet about the range. And the range, we're uh, basically gonna uh, do the same thing, but now we're going to be focused in on the y-axis, okay? So how much of this graph is kind of spanning along the y-axis? Now, if we look at the graph, you kind of have to change your perspective here. Well, this point is going to this y-axis here. You know, this point is you know connected with this um, uh, graph. So it looks like the entire y-axis is gonna be spanned, okay, with this particular graph. And that's kind of a good way to think about it, right? This this graph, this function is spanning the entire uh, y-axis. So what would be the set of output values? Well, the entire y-axis, now that would just include the whole entire set of real numbers, or you can just say, you know, all y such that y's element of the real numbers. In other words, there's a lot of different ways you can write that. Let's use interval notation. It would go from negative infinity to positive infinity, open brackets, okay? All right, so this is a, um, a very important uh, skill that you're gonna need to be able to um, you know, interpret these functions graphs to define the domain and range, okay? This comes up in quite a bit of test. I've seen these type of things like on the SAT and ACT as well. So it's something that's not like a trivial little problem. You're definitely going to see this. So if you got all of this right and you totally understand, you're like, no, this is just a quick review video for me, then I just must give you a few little extra stars and a 100% and a job well done. Okay, so again, uh, domain and range and functions, huge topic in mathematics, extremely important and a lot to cover. So hopefully, you know, this little video helped you out with these type of problems. And if that is the case, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus videos, basic to advanced mathematics. I have a lot more videos on functions, okay? within my algebra playlist, algebra two playlist, all depends on what level of math you're taking because obviously functions, you know, uh, as you continue them and you get into more advanced stuff. But uh, please, you know, if you like my teaching style, you know, check out my content and I'm making new stuff all the time. So hopefully you will subscribe, but my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.